in this video, we're going to introduce a new topic, and that topic is optics. So optics is obviously the study of light and how light interacts with materials. And in particular, we're going to be dealing with geometric optics that talks about light as rays. Now, the fundamental nature of light has been a long discussion in the history of physics. It started more or less with Sir Isaac Newton, who postulated that light was made of tiny particles called corpuscles, and this was why light traveled in straight lines. But a contemporary of Newton that we've already heard of, and that was Huygens, um, decided that light must have a wave-like nature because, of course, waves also can travel in straight lines. And so from the uh, late 1600s, early 1700s, there was a big discussion in physics about whether Newton was right and light was a particle, or Huygens was right and light was a wave. Now, Newton actually, uncharacteristically, because from what history tells us, Newton was perhaps not the nicest of people to know, he actually liked uh, Huygens' theory and spent a lot of time trying to prove that light was a wave. But despite, rather ironically, coming up with a phenomenon that we'll discuss in a later video called Newton's rings that actually proved that light was a wave, he was unaware of the mechanism behind that observation and eventually concluded that he could not find any evidence that light was a wave and so decided that light must be a particle. And because Newton had a big name and a huge reputation in, in physics, that view was held for about 100 years until the start of the 1800s when a phenomenon called diffraction proved categorically that light was in fact a wave and that Huygens picture uh, was actually more correct. And that view held sway for about another 100 years until the early 20th century when a guy you may have heard of whose name was Einstein actually helped form the quantum theory which showed that light was in fact both a particle and a wave at the same time and that gave rise to the birth of quantum mechanics. But for now, we're going to stick with geometric optics and in geometric optics, we describe light using waves. And the simplest effect that we can look at in geometric optics is reflection. So let's go and have a look at a demonstration of that. So now we're going to talk about the simplest effect in geometric optics, and that is reflection. So what we've got here is a ray box, and as we discussed, geometric optics describes light as rays, and so we have a ray of light coming out here of the box. And what I've got in my hand here is a mirror, which of course, as you know, is a good reflective surface. And so when I put this mirror in the path of the ray of light, you can see that the light reflects off the surface, and the angle at which the mirror is placed affects the angle at which the reflected ray uh, travels. So what we want to do is we want to, uh, since we're doing physics here, we want to have a relationship between the angle of the incident ray, that's the ray coming out of this box, and the angle of the reflected ray. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to hold this still here, and I'm going to trace out the surface of the mirror, and then I'm going to trace out the path of the incident ray and the path of the reflected ray, and then we can turn on the lights and have a look at this in a little bit more detail. So, if I look at this, first of all, I'm just going to tidy up these uh, rays. So here is the incident ray coming in here, and the reflected ray traveling out here, and this was the surface of the glass uh, that forms the mirror. And if I draw a line that is perpendicular to the surface of the mirror up here, we can define two angles. So this was the incoming ray, or what we call the incident ray, and the angle between this line that's perpendicular to the surface and the incoming ray, we call the angle of incidence, and we label that theta i. And if we look at the outgoing or reflected ray, we can look at the angle between this reflected ray and the thing that the line that's perpendicular to the surface of the mirror, and we call this angle the angle of reflection. 
And what we find, if we do this a bit more precisely than we've done here, is that the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. And to show that, if we dim the lights, I'll put the mirror back in place, and you can see that this indeed is the case. And so there we have the incident and the reflected ray both traveling along their paths and the uh, angle of incidence being roughly equal to the angle of reflection, at least to the accuracy that we can see here. And that is called the law of reflection. So now we've seen how light rays reflect off a mirror such as this one. What we want to do is see how do we get an image. When you look in a mirror, you see an image of yourself reflected from the glass. And so we want to understand how the rays of light build an image like that. And to do that, we have to introduce a new technique called ray tracing. And we sort of saw that in a very primitive form uh, on the, when we were demonstrating the law of reflection, where we traced the rays. And that's literally what ray tracing is. You trace the path of the rays, and then you use the laws of physics to determine how they're going to be reflected at the surface. And so to do that, let's have a look on the computer and see how a mirror generates an image. So what we've got here is we've got an object standing in front of a mirror. And so we're going to use ray tracing to show how this mirror, this plane mirror, will form an image. So when we're ray tracing, we're going to trace the path of rays. And typically what we do is we pick certain principal rays. These are going to be rays that are easy to determine their path. So the first principal ray here, although for a plane mirror we don't really sort of deal with the concept of principal rays, it's a good introduction because when we're dealing with lenses and curved mirrors, we will need them. So the first principal ray is just a ray that comes straight in here from the top of the object, and it's going in this direction. Now when that strikes the mirror, its angle of incidence is zero, and so the angle of reflection is going to be zero because remember we have the law of reflection that tells us the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. So the ray is going to be reflected straight back. It's going to go off the mirror surface and straight back and come at us this way. So that's the first ray. So the next ray that we're going to draw is the one that goes from the top of the object here down to the uh, bottom of the object here where we have this line drawn. Normally this is what we call the optical axis. If we had something like a lens or a curved mirror here that would be along the axis of symmetry, obviously for a plane mirror um, you know, we could draw this line anywhere. And this reflects off here and goes out this way. So this is our um, ray going this way. And in fact we could add any number of rays coming in different ways, but we'll just stick to these two principal rays. So let's tidy this up and then have a look at what this means for the image in the mirror. So here we have these rays now nicely tidied up and we can see we have one coming in horizontally and the other one bouncing off here. Now the what we're asking ourselves here is if we had an observer here with uh, an eye that was looking at these rays of light that are coming in this direction, what would they see? Well, what they'd see is this ray of light is, of course, coming on a trajectory something like this, and this ray of light is coming on a trajectory something like that. So these both come from the same point on the object, so the tip of the object, and so where these lines cross will be the tip of the image. And so we're going to have an image here, and so this is the image, and these two rays will come from the tip of the image. So to see where the image is located, well, if we look at this uh, triangle here, well, this is the angle of incidence for this particular ray, and this is the angle of reflection, which of course is equal, and so this here is going to be equal to the uh, angle of incidence, because it's the opposite angle to this one, and we know that theta r, the angle of reflection, is equal to theta i, the angle of incidence. And so if I look at this, this one is going back until it reaches the same height as here, and so this distance, the distance of the image behind the mirror, will equal the distance of the object in front of the mirror. And so we can tidy this up and see what we end up with.
And so here we have the full diagram and we've added in an extra ray uh, just to reinforce the point. And so we've introduced several key concepts here in what is about the simplest example we can have in geometric optics. We call the thing that we're looking, taking a picture of, if you like, is the object. The picture that it forms when it reflects off a surface or is focused by a, a lens, as we'll talk about later, is called the image. And we get there by tracing the paths of rays of light. And in this case, this is what we call a virtual image because it only exists when you look at the mirror. You can't take this image and project it onto a screen. Uh, the other type of image is called a real image, and that would be the image formed, for example, by a uh, you know, slide projector or a video projector that forms a real image because it can be projected onto a screen. This is a virtual image. It can't be protected onto a screen. And the reason it's virtual is because the rays of light don't actually come from the image. They just appear to come from the image uh, when we trace them back into, or in fact, behind the mirror. And so this is a very, very simple example of ray tracing, but this is the technique that we will use to determine where images are formed by both curved mirrors and later on by lenses. So we've now seen how geometric optics describes reflection. And reflection is a very important property of light because it's how we see almost all the objects around us. Very few objects actually emit their own light, but rather they reflect the ambient light in the environment. And the reason that objects have a color is because they only reflect certain wavelengths of light. So for example, a green leaf reflects green light but absorbs blue light and that's why it appears green. And although we don't see an image typically when we look in a leaf, that's because the typical surface of most objects is very rough. And so although you get the law of reflection being obeyed at the surface, because the surface consists of um, many different angles uh, uh, at the surface because it's rough, you don't get a coherent image reflected like you do in a mirror. But reflection still occurs and it still obeys the law of reflection. Now the other thing we can do with reflection is we can use it to focus light and create images. And to do that, we use curved mirrors such as this one. And so here we have a concave mirror where the center of the mirror is further away from the incident light than the edges. And on the flip side here, we have a convex mirror where the center is closer to the incident light than the edges. And using mirrors like these, we can actually create images and this is, in fact, uh, reflecting mirrors exist inside many astronomical telescopes. So that's it for the basic physics of reflection. Next, we're going to have a look at what happens when light is transmitted through a material, and that gives rise to a different phenomena that is called refraction.